Today I'm here at Ham Hill in Somerset and I've been told that there's an awesome geology trail around the area so being a geologist I thought I'd come investigate. Last time I was here it was the day after a wedding so I wasn't really paying full attention so I'm going to be discovering this as much as you are but some of this rock is the local rock that I do study back on Dorset so fingers crossed we're going to learn some stuff here today. And oh boy did I! Oh wow! Is it a look? I love a good excavator. So without further ado, look at that. Let's go. So just as a quick look, this little guide is really cute. So we've got all the information on one side and hopefully a nice easy little map to follow on the second side. Step one, I've come out of this hut, hut, and I'm walking up towards this building which is that building and up to stop one. So a quick bit of blurb on the way is this hill gets its name for the hamstone, i.e. ham hill. This is this beautiful honey coloured stone and it's quite common in all the local building stone in the area. So it's from the Bridport sand member which I'm familiar with seeing down at like West Bay on the Jurassic Coast. This is my favourite sign. So there's been a bit of edge clearance and I'm not sure if I've gone wrong on the path already. Okay, this wasn't the right path, but it might be more interesting because I've accidentally wandered to the active quarry. And I can hear something. Look, they're quarrying! Oh my god. Okay, just keep walking because health and safety, but look at that! That's awesome. I love a good excavator. This was very much the wrong path, but is it the wrong path if there's an excavator? I think not. But... I think this could be it. So I had a quick nose to see what we're working with around here. I think you're going to need a closer look. According to my little guide, the thin stuff on top of here was sort of flat and used for sort of like roof slates and stuff. Whereas this massively bedded stuff down the bottom was used for more of the building stone. But let's go up and have a bit of a closer look. Watching the stinging nettles because ouchie. Look at this. So can you see how we have some rocks going sort of like this way with lines and then we have a different one sort of capping it off. So this represents what we call cross bedding and this sort of would have represented where the water used to flow. And then when you stand back and look properly, we've got lines going like this, ignoring the bits here and there, just looking at this bed here. Those lines that are sort of climbing towards me tells me the direction of the flow. So with stri fairly straightforward cross bedding like this, this bottom bit points to where the flow direction was going. So I can tell you that when this rock was forming, water was flowing that way. Which I think is pretty awesome to be able to tell from a cliff face. Another particularly cool feature is this grey stuff. It's not just lichen. When you actually look closely, these are crystals. Now, these crystals are made of calcite and would have formed on fractures in the rock. And as water's gone through it, these have been able to crystallise. So there was probably a lot of calcium carbonate in that water, which would make sense because a lot of this has got shelly material in limestone. These calcite crystals though are insane, they're really quite thick, they're really quite bladed. That must have been quite a thick fracture for those calcite crystals to have been able to form. And you can see they're all on sort of the same plane, which is also how we can tell that it was formed in a fracture, not just like randomly on the surface. But they are very cool and they are all the way along. Look at this. Cliffs are quite gorgeous they're, and they're, people are just wandering past them without even knowing. But this, this rock ain't from around these parts. This is a bit of granite. So uh, yeah, don't be fooled. This block is just a nice quarry stone. I'm not quite sure why it's there. But it's a massive piece of red granite, which is definitely not local like all this gorgeous honey coloured stone. <laughs> I've also just seen this cool little fresh chunk here that I'm just going to look at closer so you can get a bit of an idea of what this hamstone is made of. So when you look closely, closely, can you see you've got this sort of browny rusty stuff? That is literally iron. Um, and uh, can you see this sort of grainy texture? Well, actually, each of these little flecks of grain are tiny bits of shell fossil. So this ancient sea environment was breaking up loads of these pieces of shell and then washing them all as on this big sort of directional flow wait directional flow we said we were going that way <laughs> um so all of these shells were being washed and deposited and broken up as they went 
You might occasionally get some bigger bits of fossil, but generally it's all really broken up. I just want to appreciate some more go gorgeous cross bedding here and here and a little bit here. Okay, I am moving on, I promise. Anyway, I've spent way too long there. Let's go on to stop two so that I stop gushing over just cross bedding and shells. So for stop two, I'm heading northwards up to that big pinnacle thing which I'm going to assume is that big pinnacle thing. Loving that all these pathways are looking pretty accessible. That makes me happy. Okay, here we are. And I can tell that these views are about to be absolutely stunning. So I'm looking behind you right now. That's quite a long way. You can see behind me there. Gorgeous. So most of what you can see behind me here is the Somerset Levels. Now this is a big area of like marine and sort of floodplain runoff area, mainly underlain by like clays. It does flood quite a bit, but generally it's been drained for a lot of years now because people use it for agricultural land and obviously beautiful houses. Um, you can just about see this hazy set of hills in the background as well. These are the Mendips Hills. Now these are a lot older than the one that I'm stood on here. So this is Jurassic, so it's about 170 million years old, whereas the stuff over that way is Carboniferous and about 350 million years old. So it's a lot, lot older. So a lot of settlements tended to be built on these hills and there's been people in this area for thousands of years. Um, I know there's quite a famous hill this way somewhere. I'm surprised I can't see it, but my eyes are not that great. Um, the famous hill that I'm talking of course is Glastonbury, Glastonbury Tor, which I don't know, maybe I'll put a picture here. Uh, Glastonbury is also one of these like raised limestoney hills in amongst all this sort of flat level ground. It makes for quite a gorgeous dramatic landscape um, and I think it makes Somerset very unique and very pretty. Anyway, I'm not going to dwell too long here because I want to get back to the rocks so let's get on to stop three. There's an outcrop over here that's not on the trail but I'm gonna have to go and look. To be honest, is it a look? Anyway, <laughs> back to the rocks. This is the rock face I was making a beeline for because look, they've shaved it down so you can see all the nice lines and structures in it. Isn't that gorgeous? Like, it's this dark feature coming down here. That's like an iron rich vein where there's been a fracture in the rock and like iron rich waters have seeped through and deposited on the outside. Really cool. Anyway, even if I had to pretend to be a miner to get here. This is my official next stop, this sort of stone circle. So, having had a look, Apparently this was constructed on the millennium to commemorate all the centuries of quarrying here on Ham Hill. And well, as you can tell, there was still some active quarrying going on at the moment. Ta-da! Zoom in. I'm definitely going to walk back by that way in a second. But yeah, cool little stone circle, all made of the local stone. All very heftily sunk into the ground to get them to stand up like this. So must have been quite a project to get them to stay. And upwards. I'm not going to dwell at that one too long because I know there's some other really cool stuff coming up, having read on ahead for spoilers, but I'm definitely going to go back via that quarry path because I want to see if I can see more excavators. Helicopter! Sadly, excavators have now stopped. <sighs> no more excavator time. Onwards. Now going pretty much back to the start to then head south. The next stop on my trail is all these lumpy bumpy hills you see around me. Now, oh, hello puppy friend. Dog. Okay, I've moved on from the dog. Anyway, so these lumpy bumpy hills are actually all spoil heaps from sort of past quarrying activities. Most of these are only about 150 years old related to the Victorian era, but the ones right round the edges, the ramparts, those are actually like Iron Age sort of defences for the top of the hill. Mostly, like the stuff that I'm stood on though, definitely just Victorian. But you can kind of see where the path has worn through, that it's just sort of like soil, bits of rock. It's, it's nothing too interesting, but it is all adding to this general picture of how long this area has been used for quarrying. And I've got to say, it does get you out of breath going up and down the hills a little bit. Oh my gosh, that's quite, that's quite lumpy bumpy over there. Anyway, I decided to move on and I did take a slight detour accidentally, but it's pretty. So here we are at the fifth stop. So these are the time stones. These are another sort of sculptural piece out of this local handstone. But this one here is made to represent like 
the axe head of some of the Iron Age stuff in the area, whereas this one is made to more represent represent the bucket. Sorry, yet another dog. That time was barking at me, but I also had to say hello. It's it's a hazard of the job. We're going to take a slight detour because there seems to be a notice board up here. So let's go and have a look and see what that is. Okay, so I found my little board and it's actually all about the fact that the fields here had some geophysics surveys done and lots of archaeological work and they've discovered there's evidence of farms, trackways, like roundhouses, all sorts. So it's quite an incredible little area, even though it might not look much to the eye now. That's history on top of history. Arguably, on top of Earth history. I don't know masses about archaeology, so feel free to pause here if you would like to read all of it. I did actually stop for a quick bit of lunch at those time stones, but onwards and upwards. Actually, technically downwards, because we're going into the deep quarry. I'm hoping this bit is going to be the star of the show. Oh wow, that's beautiful. I better not get too close to the cliff face, because to be fair, I'm not sure that's 100% stable, so I better stay well back. But my gosh, that's gorgeous. Look at that, just in this peaceful little bit of woodland. Birds are singing, quarry is gorgeous. There's some glorious cross bedding here, but I don't want to get any closer because that is a hell of a cliff. So I'm going to point with my pointy stick. Can you see, we've got like these sort of almost lens shape, like picture like an eye shape. Maybe I'll just annotate it. Okay, so hopefully I annotated it there and now you can see what I'm looking at, if I stay really still. So these aren't like the ones that we saw at the top of the hill earlier, which were all sort of jagged in one direction. That told us one direction flow. But what we're looking at here is trough cross bedding, which is these sort of lens shapes that we're looking at sort of head on. And that indicates that the water was actually coming this way towards you now. So the beauty of being able to see these structures in rocks is it completely can construct how water was flowing through an area, which just blows my mind that we can piece together like ancient watery environments just by lines in a rock like rocks contain so much of earth's history and environmental history and all sorts it's just i love it it's incredible now i'm gonna head up yonder through this little cracked path up here and see what i can find next Yeah, no, we're not going down that path. That looks insanely steep and I don't really fancy a trip to A&E today. So we're going to go back the way we came. It is actually getting quite warm, but this stop seven is technically our last stop of the day. So as if I don't get distracted by other stuff on the way, mind you. Okay, fairly busy road here and my normal footpath is apparently closed. So we're off this way. Oh gosh, I hope my sight isn't closed due to works. That would be unideal. Mm. Oh, no, no. Looks like this is what we're looking for over here. Aha. So the first thing you'll probably notice is that this is not natural. Now this sort of stone is Portland stone down from my neck of the woods in Dorset. And this sort of white stone is actually a lot of what you see London built of. Think Buckingham Palace, all the houses in central London, that sort of like white stone is often not always, but often, this Portland stone. Now, the lime kiln itself was basically used to improve the soil of the local farmers. So they shove any old offcuts of the limestone that they were using in the quarry in the top. That would drop down into this central area, which would have a fire underneath it. And that would be added with sort of charcoal and wood and stuff like that. And then that would burn off this limestone to produce lime. Let's go up and have a bit of a closer look. So, what can we spot in the Portland stone? I'm betting that should have been one whole block and it broke, so they just tried to fill it in with other things. I love little patchwork things like that in old buildings. Little Mr. Woodlouse here has really made it his home. But you can see this sort of similar shelly stuff in the Portland stone here. I think as a geologist, it's quite often easy to get caught up in the actual stone and what it is itself. But sometimes it's lovely to remember all the history that people have had tied in with geology. Because after all, we live on a planet that's made of rock, so we all have a relationship to the rock in some way, and in this case, it was the local farmers. So I'm now going to head back to the car via the visitor's centre to show you what's there. 
but otherwise that's the main geology route over i mean yeah this is glorious today i'm definitely going to be doing some more of these little explore type videos love to know if anyone knows any more of these sort of like geology trails in the uk because i'd love to follow a few more particularly if they're in the south that would be awesome so i'll go along discover them for the first time document them as i go and yeah could be quite fun so if you know any do let me know but otherwise hope you enjoyed today i certainly did and i'll see you another time <laughs>